My business went viral a year ago, and though it did not result in long-term gains, that actually ended up being a good thing. Let me explain. To recap what happened in the first place, I posted a video to TikTok and Instagram Reels on June 8th, 2022. The video was basically just me explaining how to use one of my products, and it took off almost immediately. I posted it before I went to bed, and I woke up the next day to more orders than I usually got in a week. And it just kept going up for the entire month of June and into July as well. In this video that you're watching now, I'm gonna be sharing the metrics and exactly what happened between now and then. Since whenever you hear about somebody's business or video going viral, you only really see what happens in the short term. Before we get started, just getting this out of the way now, but the business I'm referring to is not Type 9 Studio. I have a completely separate business that I keep separate on purpose. I do not mention or link to my actual Etsy shop or business pages because that actually hurts my conversion rate and thus my income when people are coming from this channel to go snoop around my Etsy shop, so don't. And it doesn't even help you to copy somebody else's shop, so stop doing that. So what was happening when I posted that video in June 2022? I had just opened my Shopify in May of 2022, so the month prior, and in April, so the month before that, had been the absolute worst month ever for my shop since I have been full-time as far as sales. And that April was actually when Etsy increased their fees. A lot of Etsy sellers were organizing a boycott and letting their followers know about the Etsy boycott. I didn't like specifically tell my followers to boycott because that was my only source of income at the time. And a lot of other sellers were kind of in the same boat. I'm not gonna get into all of that boycott stuff today because that's old news, but I am assuming that is the majority of the reason why my sales were low in April. But that is ultimately what pushed me to open my Shopify in May. So it really went from 0 to 100 for me as far as sales, as you will see in the following data analysis. I've been tracking my monthly sales and social media followers in a Google Sheet since the beginning of 2021. I keep track of my gross sales, so that is sales from Etsy and Shopify combined before any fees or shipping is taken out. I'll track the number of orders and the average order value. For our purposes today, I'll be showing the graph of my sales in dollar amount, but with the numbers cut off for reasons. But I use the others for my own research to identify patterns, which did allow me to identify that my average order value has increased. So before the viral video, my average order value was in the $25 to $30 range ever, like when the viral video was going on and ever since, like it hasn't slowed down my average order value is in the $35 to $45 range. And this is because my best selling product category changed. So my best seller now is a bit of a higher value than what I was previously selling a lot of. I don't have this option available for every single variation of this product, but for the best selling ones, I have a double pack basically for $40 or people will usually buy multiple packs of 10 of like different prints and designs. And the pack of 10 is $22 versus the 20 pack being 40. So if people buy multiple 10 packs, it makes me a bit more. So here is a graph of the sales data. So the blue line is 2021, the red line is 2022, and the black line is 2023 so far. The worst month you can barely see there is April 2022. And then actually the second worst is very close to that, which was this past month, June 2023. I'll explain this more a bit later on in the video, but last month was a real bad month for a lot of various personal reasons, so I was not promoting or really doing much at all, but I'm on track for July to be better, so here's hoping. Now on to the social media. So this was actually an interesting set of charts to make and kind of solidified what I had already thought about these social media platforms. This first one is TikTok. I've had pretty steady growth on TikTok since tracking this, at least between the start of of me keeping track of the number and when the viral video happened because you see the big spike there in June. I was posting pretty regularly to TikTok. I started out mostly only posting on Instagram, but I was posting pretty regularly in both places right up until this. And then after the viral video was kind of over, I actually lost followers and it's completely leveled off since then for reasons. But why I lost followers, I don't know exactly. My speculation is that there were a lot of bot accounts or people that just followed me because of that viral video 
and then like unfollowed or the bot accounts got shut down or something or just that number of people finding me like they could have deleted their accounts for whatever reason completely unrelated to me just kind of like dropped off that happens sometimes on any social media like it'll be really weird if you don't lose followers occasionally but the video got the most views on tiktok and it was around 800,000 the last time i checked which was a while ago which isn't a lot in the grand scheme of things for a viral video but compared to the typical two to three thousand views i usually got sometimes they got up to fifteen thousand that was pretty significant and then it leveled off there because i just stopped posting for the most part. I've posted maybe a handful of videos since then, like maybe once a month. That whole experience just broke something in my psyche. So I turned off all notifications for every social media app that I have. So if you've messaged me or commented or anything and I haven't answered, like even for this, not just for my business, but for Type 9 Studio as well, those notifications are off. I, it's not personal. I just haven't answered because I haven't looked. This graph is for Instagram. There was a little jump in June, 2022, but for the most part, it's been pretty steady. I did have a few other videos since then get some traction, like maybe 20,000 views or so, whereas the exact same video got less than 1,000 on TikTok, which compared to 28,000 followers is real bad. But like I said, this kind of solidifies something that I thought about the different platforms and how they kind of work, at least at this point. I find that Instagram Reels can get views for months or even years at this point because it's been around for a little while now. Well, videos on TikTok seem to mostly die off once the viral hype is over. But on either platform, if you have something go viral, it helps your older posts as well because people are either going back to watch the rest of your videos if they discover you from the viral one, or the algorithm will just go back and recommend more of your videos that they think that viewer will like, and it brings them up over time. The next chart is for my mailing list, and this was an absolute disaster right before I started my Shopify. I did a whole video about it at the time, and basically I changed mailing list providers because I didn't really like the one I was on, and something happened with the link to my landing page that I didn't notice. So people were signing up for an old list or getting sent to the wrong link, and I was wondering why people weren't signing up for the new one because I wasn't giving them the right link. When it came time to launch my Shopify, I just wanted to use their platform for the emails because it's a lot simpler. My customer list is integrated. I don't have to worry about if it's carrying over. And the cost is included with the subscription unless you're sending like an insane amount of emails. Like I get a thousand or a hundred thousand per month and I don't get anywhere near that. So anyways, here is the chart for my email list. It's been slowly and steadily climbing since then, just with that jump in the middle because I was encouraging people to come to my website and sign up for the mailing list to be notified of a restock because my stuff sold out pretty quick. And then what I should have done differently, there are a few things that looking back I have solidified like it's been a year now. I think the last time I updated on this was like a couple months after. A big part of the issue was either running out of or not being able to manage the stock amounts. So when I woke up like the next day after I posted it, I wasn't for sure like, oh, this is going viral. I am going to keep getting a lot of orders that I did not realize that for a while. By the time I noticed that, I was out of my best sellers and it, I was having to go in and manually move stuff back and forth between Etsy and Shopify. And a lot of the things that I sold out of, I could not get the materials for anymore because the prints that I showed in the video were, unbeknownst to me at the time, limited edition prints from Halloween that I had ordered the year prior that didn't sell through all the way. I didn't realize until it was too late that I could not get any more of them. I don't, it wouldn't have changed anything even if I had known that. <laughs> there were some comments on the video from fellow creators, like people who sell things are like, hey, um, you need to put like a restock notification thing on your Shopify because these people that are seeing this video are gonna forget about you or like lose your account somehow. So you need to like keep in contact with them. And I was like, yeah, but if I put a restock notification on this, I'm never going to notify them because I can't restock it. But I did add a restock notification app to my Shopify after this. It was just kind of pointless at the time, so I wish there was a different way to do that. And people signed up for like the email list, but I probably lost out on quite a few sales because of 
not being able to get the stuff again and not being able to contact them if somehow I was able to get it again, which I still have not because I look like every week and they never restocked it. I also could not do a pre-order for the same reasons. I knew I could not get the exact same prints and my supplier has been slightly unreliable. So even if I did do a pre-order for like a new print, I don't know if I could get enough of it or if it's even gonna look exactly like what it does online. Like the only way to do a pre-order reliably is if you are working directly with a manufacturer and they are making the product for you. <laughs> like, and they've sent you a sample and everything because the materials can be iffy. What did end up helping with managing the stock counts between Etsy and Shopify is a service called Trunk. It will sync your stock counts on both platforms or multiple. They have other integrations as well if you have more than those two. And it even lets you bundle listings or create kits. So if you have like three different products that you sell individually, but also sell them as a bundle, it will let you set that up so that if you sell a bundle, it'll subtract one of each of the individual components. Before this happened, I was looking into options for something like this because even with the relatively low amount of orders that I was getting beforehand, it was a bit difficult and time consuming to track things in both places and make sure that they were even, but also like if I sold out of one, like if somebody wanted to buy more than what I had, but I really did have it, it was a whole mess and a lot of stress. As I was considering my options for this, I tried one that I did not like and I was like, you know what? I don't even need this anyways. I'll just wait, but I was very wrong. I got trunks set up on time for the big restock and the setup was pretty quick. Like there wasn't really much for me to actually set up except for the bundles because it syncs by the SKU number. And I already had those set up anyways. That would have saved me so much time and helped me make way more sales. Like I don't even wanna think about how many more sales I could have made if I had Trunk to begin with. I do have an affiliate link for Trunk if you think that's something your business could benefit from. So I'll put that in the description box. The restock was a whole other mess. While it was happening, I actually debated whether or not I should delete my Etsy link from my link tree because it seemed to be defeating the purpose of having a Shopify for less fees when literally the split between my sales was like 50-50 between Shopify and Etsy. Maybe people were more comfortable shopping on Etsy versus an independent website, which I completely understand. So I just left it. But on Etsy, there was no way like up front to let people know that I was going to restock soon. They were just going there, seeing that the stuff was sold out. And I have no idea if they went back and looked at my Shopify or not. Cause you can set up the announcement section on your Etsy page, but if you're on mobile, you don't see that. You only see the announcement section at the top of an Etsy shop on desktop, at least right now. And since the traffic was coming from Instagram and TikTok, which are majorly, mostly used on mobile, it was kind of pointless. I did have something there, but it, people weren't seeing it. So leading up to the restock, and by the time I had sold out of mostly everything, I put my Etsy shop on vacation mode because at least there you can put a message saying I am catching up on orders and working on a restock and I gave them the link to my website. And I believe that Etsy lets you, lets somebody viewing a shop to either sign up for an email notification or follow the shop so they get notified when the shop is no longer on vacation mode. But on my website, I could just update the banner and like the text at the top and move the email sign up list to the very top of the page, let people know that I'd be restocking and sign up to be notified so they don't forget. I'm still unsure if I should have deleted my Etsy link out of my link tree. I think it did help my Etsy shop in the long run though because I had all those extra orders and the reviews and stuff from that that really helped my other listings. So, but even before this happened, I should have had international shipping set up on my Shopify. I didn't set it up yet because it is a complicated process to get shipping to the EU set up because you need like the VAT and the licenses and all that, which I did not even have time to research how to do much less implement once all this was going on. I had so few international orders on Etsy already that I didn't think it was really worth the time in the beginning, but now I think it might have been. I also should have extended my processing times much sooner than I did. I had it set to one to three days for like a week, but by that point it was too late and I was not able to continue 
the one to three days because there were so many orders each day I wasn't able to keep up. And eventually I ended up having to send a dozen of them late because it just wasn't going to happen on time. And I had to start prioritizing Etsy orders over Shopify orders because I didn't want to risk Etsy either involuntarily vacationing my shop or shutting it down, which I hated that I had to do because I think it's unfair to people that ordered before that on Shopify, but so many came in by the time I extended the processing time, it was just too late. If I had all of the products on hand and ready to ship, it would have been no problem to ship 50 plus orders a day. It does not take me that long. Right before this, I had foreseen that this could potentially be a problem, and when I had done things like craft shows previously, I would have to spend like a week straight, day and night, making products to be ready for that, and I didn't want that to happen again. So I was like, I will start with each category, like just pick one category of products, make them all ahead and then move on to the next one. Well, I didn't get very far with that before this happened. I was also still using domestic or home model sewing machines, which were not made to be run full throttle for 12 plus hours a day for months on end. Thankfully, the influx of revenue did help me to buy industrial machines, which were made to do that and much more quickly. Then keeping up the momentum on social media after that was a challenge for a couple reasons. First one being that I didn't have time and I felt guilty for stopping to take 30 minutes to an hour to make and post a video when people were waiting for their orders, which does feel silly in hindsight for that specific reason because I don't normally, like any other time, I don't drop everything and fill an order before I do anything else, right? So I don't know why. It was just stressful. But I should have been in there like at least every other day, every three days, taking like half an hour to an hour to reply to comments or make like video responses to people's questions or something or making videos showcasing other products that were not getting as much attention. Now the other side of that was I was literally scared to open the TikTok app. I both wanted to read and respond to every comment, but then I was also scared to even read them in the first place. I recognized that it was important for me to be engaging with people and you know, answering questions because they could be potential customers that just had a question about the product, but I just couldn't balance that and being terrified of what the comments were. If you are new to the channel, Channel or this is your first vlog video of mine. I mentioned it a few times, but I am both ADHD and autistic. And those two disorders share a symptom that is probably the worst of all of them, in my opinion, in my experience, and that is rejection sensitive dysphoria. If you have never experienced this, lucky you, because the only way that I can explain it is a physical reaction or overreaction to something that you even perceive as negative or critical or like a rejection. Even simple, valid questions that somebody would have about my products cause me literal chest pains, let alone when people were actually hateful, which viral videos tend to attract more of. Unfortunately, this phenomenon is not one of those things that you can just get over with repeated exposure to it or developing a thick skin. It just gets worse and it takes a lot of work, like therapy to help at all. Having the right mindset going into it helps a little and so does the timing that you go like reading comments. Like taking about five minutes or so right in the middle of an otherwise busy day usually works okay because I'm going to be immediately distracted by something else as long as I set a timer for five minutes and close the app when the timer goes off. But if I decide to do it right before I go to bed or right after I wake up or even right before I go on like a lunch break, bad idea. Also bad idea was having notifications on. I think some apps will let you, like when it pops up on your phone, sometimes you can see a preview of like what the comment was or like if you have a text message, it kind of shows you like the first part of the text message. Sometimes you can turn that off depending on your phone, but even that doesn't help because if I get a notification saying that I have a comment, I'm gonna be thinking that it's negative. So I'm gonna like be thinking about it anyway. So it's just have all the notifications off. Generally on TikTok, I am able to go in, post a video and not even have to like look at the comments unless one like pops up that comes in at the same time that I'm looking at it. My solution to the not posting anything would be to have a backlog of content that you can post. So work like one to two weeks in advance. That way, if something like this were to happen or if you have an emergency or you just don't feel like 
making a video one day, then you'll have something. So where I am now, um, well, literally right now, it is pouring the rain outside. <laughs> As you could probably tell from the data analysis portion earlier, I am definitely not on the continual up and up with the business. I think people expect going viral to be life-changing, usually in a positive way, at least if you don't know anybody who's actually gone through it but it certainly can be. It did change my life for those few months. One of the things that I have considered is whether I could have continued making that amount of sales that I did in June 2022 if I had fixed all the things that I mentioned earlier that I should have done differently, but I don't think so. That amount of sales with being only one person and my husband helping me pack orders sometimes, like a handful, <laughs> That was not sustainable for me at all. I didn't even really have time to sleep, much less to strategize or manage the back end of the business. Things like new products, marketing, ordering supplies, planning my office, all on the back burner. And those things were just as important as getting the orders out in the first place. But could I have hired somebody to help? It's possible if this had been a slower ascent uh, into madness, but at that time, on top of everything and the stress of getting orders out on time, plus having to find and hire and train an employee to work with me in this tiny bedroom in my house while COVID was much more of a concern than it is now, no, hell no. But you know what? Aside from the obvious factor of making less money, I'm just gonna say it, I'm glad that it didn't stay that way. If I had been working towards that at the time, if I was actively trying to grow a business and move it offsite and have a warehouse and employees and stuff, sure, maybe, but I wasn't. I needed a job that was flexible so I can move with my husband and help pay the bills. So it was never really my intention to grow the business like exponentially and turn it into like this massive thing beyond myself. Like I envisioned maybe having like one employee or somebody helping me like part time, but that's about it. I actually did not end up getting that much more take home pay that month than I did previously because all of these supplies and materials that I had accumulated over like two years or so before that when I was getting the business off the ground, those were all gone within like a week. So I had to use all of that money to replenish all of those at the same time. And then having to buy the new equipment, which was several thousand dollars as well, it didn't really affect my take home pay that much. Everything seemingly like returned to normal as far as like normal sales and stuff around October, November of last year. In the time between now and then, it has just been one thing after another. So first my husband deployed overseas. So I was helping him get ready and spending time with him for like two months prior. And then my parents came to visit. I was able to spend time with them. And then shortly after the visit with my parents, end of May, early June, my grandma got really sick and I went back up to Kentucky to visit her. And not long after, after that, at the beginning of June, I got the phone call that they were putting her on hospice because she wasn't improving. I was absolutely a wreck after that. By that point, it would have been an understatement to say that money was tight. Because with my husband deploying and everything and it taking a long time to get him like ready to go and like wanting to spend all of our time together before he left and then being sad that he left and like even though I was home I couldn't work and it finally caught up to me that I needed to do something because it was getting like dire. I hadn't had time to catch up on doing marketing or anything or making new products. I might have only made one new product in the entirety of 2023 so far. And the summer is slow anyways, usually. And after I got that call, I just relentlessly like beat myself up about it. It was my fault for not hustling hard enough or whatever, and just kind of accepted that it was my punishment that I wouldn't get to go see my grandma before she died. My husband has been great and supportive We've been able to stay in contact where he is. And at this exact time of the day, he was asleep because it was like evening here 
and it would have been like early morning where he's at so I couldn't like get a hold of him. So I called my dad and my other grandma and they both said exactly the same thing. That maybe business is slow for a reason and you will have time to go and not have to worry about so many orders and whatnot. Because she's on hospice and this is it. You only have one mammal. And finally it just clicked and that was exactly what I needed to hear and I immediately, like after I hung up the phone, just threw my stuff in a bag and like ran over to the computer and extended my processing times and whatnot and just left out here. I drove overnight to Kentucky and she ended up passing two days later and we had the funeral the following week. I got to say goodbye and be there for my mom and grandpa and I got to see a lot of family that I hadn't seen in a long time and just didn't have a care in the world about my business or anything. And that's how I want it to be. And it didn't stop there. I had to rush back home after everything was said and done because I had my last two wisdom teeth removed. I was out of it for like four days. I had already rescheduled it once and without going into details, I, they needed to come out. <laughs> So I didn't even work a week total, maybe three days total in June, which, I mean, all things considered, I am lucky to have made as much as I did. I really have been reconsidering a lot of things, probably over-considering and thinking too much about things as usual. But I want to give myself more freedom to change things because I felt stuck for a long time. I think pretty much all of you are also creatives that are struggling to fit into the business world and having to do that side of things. So you probably relate like you gotta do whatever makes you money to survive, but also you'd rather be doing anything else. My husband's kind of the opposite. He was like, just wait until you start seeing the money roll in and you'll feel better about it or you'll enjoy what you're doing again. But I was like, no, not really. It doesn't matter to me if I make one dollar or a million dollars. If I don't enjoy something, I don't enjoy it. I have been working on this relatively small product launch. I'm looking at the stuff on my table right now. Since like before this stuff happened with my grandma and I kept putting it off and I eventually like had to force myself to work on it here and there. I had pushed off the launch date for like, a month now and yesterday was going to be the day but I just kept having problems with my sewing machine and I took it apart and cleaned and oiled it and it was still giving me problems which I think I know what the problem is but I was like you know what I think I just shouldn't do this right now. <laughs> like it's not what I'm supposed to be doing but then I don't know what I am supposed to be doing. I think one of my last vlogs was about being burnt out and I can say that it hasn't really improved much. I've struggled with having hobbies and feeling the pressure to monetize them for years. I know the importance of having hobbies and taking breaks from work, but I just can't shake that guilty feeling like I should be doing something for my business or I should be doing something to make money or that I don't deserve to take time off because I haven't worked enough. But then I'm not entirely happy with the work either so I just end up paralyzed and not doing anything at all. That's not to say that these feelings are a direct result of the viral video, but it certainly didn't help. I do think that the viral video had a net positive effect on my business, even though like the sales didn't continue as they were and I didn't make that much more like take home pay but I was able to buy the new equipment that I really needed. But the increased sales only lasted for a few months, which does get tricky because then you'll start to expect that those increased numbers are your new baseline. And it just gets worse and worse as you continue failing to meet your skewed expectations. It also did not help the imposter syndrome that I feel with this channel. And sometimes I have honestly wanted to quit my business or change it to be something other than what it is now, like just do something different with it. But then I kind of would be a phony because how would I teach you about Etsy and having a business if I didn't have one anymore myself? So everybody that makes a YouTube channel or anything has to have, in my opinion, some small amount of narcissism and I just don't think I have enough <laughs> to talk out of my ass about things that I 
am unqualified to talk about. But I suppose that's why so many of you are here, because it's what you like about me, so I'm still here. I am going to take a slight step back from the channel though and do videos as I'm inspired to do them. I am in the middle of the How to Start an Etsy Shop in 2023 series, which I will continue. I don't want to leave that hanging, but I also don't want to force it either. I do have some other video topics in mind that are a bit more interesting than just the basics of Etsy. I'll probably do those after the series is over, but I don't want to force those either, so I'm not going to have like a set schedule for those anymore. I did reopen my shop reviews recently, and even though I may not be posting videos regularly, I am checking those and completing them because I do enjoy helping people like that on like a one-on-one -on -one basis more than making videos most of the time. So if the link is active, in my description boxes, then I am still doing them. So what are our takeaways from today? You never know if or when one of your posts is going to go viral, so prepare ahead of time. It at least wouldn't hurt to make a plan, like if this happens, or if your shop just kind of grows organically versus virally then you will have an idea of kind of how you're going to scale things later on. Second thing is, ironically, family first. Having an online business is generally more flexible than you may think it is, so don't be afraid to take time off if you need to. A couple days or a week is not going to tank your business in the long run. And third, I am talking to myself as well, but let's do more of the things that fulfill us creatively. Take the time to make something for you or work on something that you have been putting off because it's not a priority or not for the business, so I am not allowing myself to work on it or punishing myself by not doing this thing that I want to do, just do it. And I have a lot of those things. 